working hard at Mecca. They see you, they see us. I love to see it. Our time is now. I was born in 1937. I've seen it all. There aren't many like us. We still dope. We still dope. We still dope. Still dope. Still dope. It's real dope. Knocking out your speakers cause I'm still dope. Still dope. Being dope. Black without no features. I, I, I. We've been passed up and on purpose Told us all that we worthless Ain't good enough for that board rules You only good enough for that circus Better jump high, better run fast Better rap good, better kiss ass We in fields and courts Damn, what a game from the field to court This an eerie sport Break the chains, keep the faith Read the book, change your name Beat the odds, change the game Do the knowledge, then make it rain I said break the chains, keep the faith Read a book, change your name Beat the odds, change the game Do the knowledge, then make it Still dope Still dope, it's real dope. Knocking out your speakers, cause I'm still dope. Still dope, being dope. Black without no features, I, 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 I. We still dope. Real life chat foes, we heroes, man, we still dope. Still dope, we been dope. Knocking out your speakers, I. Slave hard for that dope. Came around for that go. If you don't love yourself, but you getting rich, and I'm afraid it's all for that show. Huh. Who's paid and they been paid? Who's saw like a sensei? I'm draped up in that can take. Can't tell me nothing, my rent's paid. Mortgage too, but can't mortgage futures. Gotta do it all like Karma Sutra. Listen real close, who they call a loser? They be hating on you while they spying to you. You're still dope, but they lying to you. This boss status, you can build your own. It don't matter much if they don't hire you. They don't hire you, we gon' maintain. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. This game's changed. The whole family all like that Wayne's gang. I mean, the real, real. Lame's lame. So smart, need my brain frame. So dope, need my name change. You bees getting my A game. See that? A game. Real dope, knocking out your speakers, cause I'm still dope, still dope, being dope, flat without no features, I, 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 we still dope, real life chat bows, we heroes, man, we still dope, still dope, we been dope, knocking out your speakers, I, Still dope. So uh, I would say it was um, close to this time last year. Uh, actually, two years ago. Wow. Um, we were going through a lot in this country, right? We were preparing for the election. So there's obviously a lot going on there. Uh, George Floyd situation happened. Um, there were protests all across the country, which I participated in. I'm sure some of you guys did too. And I started to realize, man, I was like, you know, our people, we've been through a lot. Um, and people in general are going through a lot right now. And we feel like, I feel like we needed something to kind of uplift. Um, so I, I was actually in a state of depression, probably for the first time in my life. Couldn't get out of it. And uh, luckily my producer pulled me out of it. One of my producers, he had sent me this beat and I was like, man, there's something, there's something powerful here. And uh, from that came Still Dope. And so I'll talk more about Still Dope a little bit later and the brand that's actually developed as a result of me writing that song and creating this video. Um, but that's just a little bit of context for the video. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I want to start with everybody standing up real quick. Get a little bit of engagement going on. I'm not going to take too much of your time, but um, I, want, I, want, I want you guys to try something with me for a second, okay? Um, and don't worry, it's nothing too crazy, okay? So... When I count to three, I want you to reach as high in the air as you possibly can, the highest you could possibly reach. I know we just ate, don't blow up their, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't stretch your clothes too much, but do it do as best as you can, as high as you could possibly reach, all right? One, two, three. Okay, is that as high as you guys could possibly go? Okay, let's go higher. 
You got higher? All right. Everybody sit down. Everybody sit down. When I told you guys to go higher, did you guys go higher? Yeah. Why? I told you the first time to go as high as you could possibly go. So how is it possible that there was any space left for you to go higher? So when you guys actually continue moving in your life, I want you guys to think about that. When you think about, oh, I've done all I can do, it's bullshit. You haven't. There's more to go. Let's start with the presentation. Relationships rule. So I'm big on relationships. Everything I feel like, and all the panelists, all the speakers, everybody that we've talked to, so, or that's spoken so far, has referenced the power of relationships on some level. So for me, that's something that's been very important in my life. So just a quick background, um, Mechadon Enterprises is the name of my company, uh, international entertainment consulting firm. We focus on client development, marketing, branding, diversity, equity, inclusion, and legal advising. And I'm also an artist, so I represent myself in a lot of different deals, which has been pretty cool. Some of the clients, still dope is obviously the brand that I've created, but some of the clients that, and that we've worked with on a bunch of different levels, the Cleveland Browns, ESPN, Ohio State, uh, SWV is... <laughs> SWV is one of my clients uh, from a legal perspective. I represent them on a bunch of different deals. And um, the Big Ten, Big Ten Network and the Big Ten Conference. And so multi-dimensional relationship with them. I um, actually am on their, uh, one of the 10 members on their Equality Coalition Executive Committee. So that's been awesome. And I've also done a lot of licensing deals with them as well. So that's a multi kind of dimensional relationship. And I'm gonna speak a little bit on that and how those things have happened. So, I want to talk about the power of relationships and the power of using what it is that you have. See, I believe everybody has an advantage. And we need our purpose is to find that advantage and to use that advantage mercilessly, right? Without, without apology. So, and it could be a wide ranging thing of your advantage. It could be my aunt or my uncle was an executive at an, uh, a big corporation. It could be, you know, my former teammate, you know, it's Obi. <laughs> you know, it can be, I'm funny and I can make people laugh. It's something unique to you that is your advantage and you use that advantage. So for me, and my story is kind of a wild one, um, my, my passion has always been music. And as you guys can see, and obviously I do a lot of things, but my main passion has always been music. So I'm a lawyer, as you guys know, but I, and I worked at a big law firm when I graduated from law school. I went to NYU and I worked at a big firm. And after about a year, I was like, this ain't it. I'm out. Everybody's like, what? That's the American dream right there. But for me, it wasn't. For me, being on my own and figuring out what my own path was, was the American dream. So I was young enough to where I didn't have any re responsibilities. I wasn't married then. I didn't have any kids. And I was like, if I don't jump out now, I'm going to get stuck here making this salary. And I'm never going to leave. So I left. And it was crazy. There was articles written about it. American Bar Association wrote a whole thing about it. There was people ridiculing and criticizing left and right, as you can imagine. Even, and you know, coming from a Nigerian family, you can imagine. <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> It wasn't necessarily well received. Uh, so you're gonna jump out and you're gonna go be an artist? Like what, a rapper, like what? Like, no, that's, you made it already, what are you doing? But for me, it made sense because first of all, I felt like First of all, being an attorney, I think, helps with everything. You know, even if, whether you're practicing or not practicing. Um, but also, I feel, I feel like I fulfilled my obligation at that point, right? It wasn't like I dropped out. I went, I, I went to law school, I passed the bar, I worked at a firm, I have that on my resume. Now it's time for me to do what it is that I feel like is in my heart. So I jumped out, but it was scary because I didn't have any deal. It wasn't like I jumped out and I was signing to Sony Records. I was like, mm, what am I gonna do now, right? But what I realized was I needed to find what my, my advantage was. So obviously I felt like I was a talented artist, but that's not enough. A lot of people are talented. What is it that you're gonna do that's actually gonna create a wave or create a space for you that's unique and that's different? So I was like, what are my advantages? One of my advantages is I played football as a walk on at Ohio State University. I knew a lot of people still at Ohio State. It's from Columbus, Ohio, born and raised. My family was from Columbus, Ohio, born and raised. Everybody went to Ohio State. I was like, let me try to tap into that network. So what I did was we set up a meeting with some people that worked at Ohio State and told them, you know what, we want to start creating anthems for the university. And they're like, oh, that would be really cool. Let's, you know, let's see how it goes. So I created an anthem for Ohio State. First one was called Let's Go OHIO. Did well. Everyone really liked it. They're like, we want you to create more. I was like, bet, let's do it. So I created another one called Juice. 
Now this time, Juice was so popular that they now wanted to do a branding deal with merchandise for Juice merchandise as well. So we teamed up with the Ohio State University and this is the first deal of its kind where an artist had, has had officially licensed song from the university and then created branded products as a result. So there's hoodies and hats and t-shirts and whatever. We did seven figures in sales. That's how big the thing was. So I was like, okay, this is beautiful. So now I, now I have a name for myself. Now it's all about leveraging. And as you can see the arrows, I leveraged that. If I could do this with Ohio State, let me go to the Big 10. Then I started doing licensing with the Big 10. Then I took that and I was like, well, if I could do that, then let's keep going. Let's keep going to people that I know. Went to the Browns, then we got to ESPN, and it's just kind of been a consistency of leveraging from that initial point. And that was how I kind of created my niche. The sad part about it for me was I felt like, because I'm creating anthems, people might not take me seriously as an artist. But I realized so long as I had a plan, I'll be able to pivot out of that and do the other things that I wanted to do. So that was the, the thing when I talk about the power of relationships and using what you have. It was that whole idea of just starting with Ohio State. Who do I know there? That took me nationally and internationally. I want to talk about customer engagement and relationships. So, you know, one of the things when you're trying to create your own brand is figuring out how do you engage with people specifically, right? And so one of the things that we did, this is 2014, was crowdfunding for my first album. We had an album, uh, album 2014 called The Dream Goes On. And we were trying to figure out, all right, how are we going to fund this thing? You know, I, we don't have a lot of funding. And also, it wasn't just about funding, but it was also about letting people know that this thing is actually happening. How do you even get people to care? So we came up with crowdfunding. The beauty of crowdfunding was that it forces you to tell pretty much every single person that you engage with what it is that you're doing. And whether or not they actually support or give money or not, it's fine. It's still marketing, right? They still know about it. So we were able, we had a goal of raising 12,500 in, in a month that we were able to raise, I think over 21,000, which was great for us. It was over 300 people. So one thing that's important about that though, was that by the time we had started to crowdfund, people had known very specifically that this was something that was that who I was and that this is something that was in my heart. So it wasn't like, I'm like, yo, I'm starting a bakery. Yo, can donate money, right? That's not, people don't want to donate to causes like that or don't want to participate in that type of thing. So it's got to be authentic. So that was, that was the value of kind of that specific marketing. Social media for me has been important in, any, in building any type of brand and meeting people where they are. That's also something that's very important, especially nowadays. You know, I'm not necessarily on TikTok, but I got to be on TikTok. You know what I mean? Sometimes or I got to figure out a way to create a space where people are who consume the products that I consume. And that's true for whatever business it is that you're in. Like Larry being here, Larry being here. I bet he got about 10 clients from that, from that presentation that he did, maybe more, you know. So you got to kind of meet people where they are. And then collecting and uh, managing data. This is a big one. So when I first started releasing music, so for example, give me an example. We did 10,000 singles on Apple, Apple Music, right? Ten, on iTunes, when it was I, iTunes back then, 10,000. That's great. You get basically two thirds of that in money. It's great. So you can make maybe $7,000. You have 10,000 people, 10,000 fans of people that just downloaded your music. That's, you're making, you're making moves now. But what you realize very quickly is that you don't know who any of those people are, not even one, unless they tell you. You don't know who they are. You know who has the data? Apple has the data. So they'll give you this little, kind of little fake, Metrics, like you could say where someone's from and the demographics and the age and where they live, but you still don't know who they are. So you can't contact them. When you're going to release your next single, you can't contact that person. If you have merchandise that's coming out, you can't contact that person, but you know who can? Apple can. So I was fortunate enough to sit down with Ryan Leslie. Some of you guys may know him. Yeah. Big singer in New York. Best producer ever. Yeah, and a dope producer. And uh, I got connected to him through a friend. And he sat down and kind of and walked me through what he was doing and helped me kind of build my own infrastructure, my own website. And so some people are still never going to go to your website to download music. They're still going to go to Apple Music. But let's say if you have 10,000, even if you get 5% of those people, right? Now you have 500 people, you know what I mean? People that you can market to specifically. And over time, that's going to build and grow and develop, which it has now over thousands of people on email lists. So that's another thing is important to actually collect and manage data. That is the most important thing in the game right now. So uh, along those lines also, it's kind of developing reliable systems. So one of the first brands that we had started was called Pilot Boys. And when we started that brand, it was, it was great because we were so excited. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved the merchandise. We're like, oh, Pilot Boys, we had athletes and celebrities and all these people wearing the stuff. And we had moved a lot of units. But what we learned very quickly was that our sy systems were off. So for example, let's say you order 
a hundred, a hundred shirts, right? And you pay $10 a shirt, right? So now you have a, you have you spent a thousand dollars basically on products. Okay. And let's say you sell 50 of those shirts at $15, right? You made $750. That's great, but you're still a loser, right? And you still have 50 shirts in inventory that you haven't sold yet. So you lost. It's great that you have those people wearing your money, but you lost in that deal. And that's what was happening to us. We didn't understand how to manage inventory. We didn't have any system. We were just like, all right, let's order and then we'll just try to sell then. Nah, that's not, that's not how it works. And so we learned the hard way that yeah, we sold a lot, but we still didn't make money. Enter drop shipping, which changed the game for us and still dope. Drop shipping basically is essentially a third party that will handle all, a lot of that stuff um, for you. So and on top of not just, not just the losing money in the pilot boys, it's also about doing all of the work. And ultimately, and this Obi has touched on this at some point, ultimately the goal as an executive is to not be doing the $10 an hour work. That's the goal. Obviously you have to start there, but that's the goal. So now you're doing the, you're doing the managing the orders and doing the shipping and the labels and the printing and going to the post office and stuff like that. It's just a waste, it's a waste of time. Now you have drop shipping, third party, third party that does all of that for you. So the orders come into your website, Boom, it goes straight to the, to the third party. They do all the printing, all the shipping, all that stuff, make it look official and handle all that. You pay them a small fee, but it's worth it. So now you can manage inventory, right? Without having to have excess inventory in your house and it's on demand. And you also now have somebody who's reliable who's doing that work as well. So that's why it's important to also, whatever it is in your business, to develop reliable systems and take advantage of the things that are actually out there. One of the things that I also wanted to talk about is managing multiple verticals because, you know, in the introduction, and thank you for that, by the way, uh, you know, there, I, I do a lot of different things. And so I'm involved with a lot of different businesses. And the question, and, I, and a lot of you guys are as well, and I'm sure you guys will, will think the same thing, is how do you kind of manage all of these different things? And you guys touched on this on the panel actually earlier. People, you went with people. You know, you have to have people involved you have you it cannot just be you you know at some point you're gonna have to figure out who who else can i use what other systems can i use what other people can i get involved to do whatever it is that i'm doing that can help me manage what it is that i'm doing and then along those lines is also be being willing to delegate and it's hard because this this business is your baby right and it's hard to give somebody your baby and say hey go promote this for me or go sh go show people what it is that i'm trying to do or, or speak on my vision but ultimately there are a lot of people that can do things that you can't do, number one. And there are people that can do what you can do <laughs> if you coach them and you teach them. There are, you know, so you have to get out of that mindset thinking that I have to do it or, or otherwise it's not going to be correct. And you just have to have some trust, right? You have to have some trust. And then also a constant evaluation. And that's just another thing that I think we all have to do of, of each vertical in each business. What, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? How is it performing? What systems can I change or reevaluate to determine if they're working or if they're not working and be constantly evaluating what it is that you're involved in them. There, there's things that we started that we thought were going to be great. And after you do the evaluation, you're like, you know what, this isn't working. Let it go. So three kind of key takeaways for me, um, you know, my story is all as a passion story. It's always, a, it's, it's really about passion and for my goals are to inspire and, and, uh, encourage. Right. And so for me, you know, Find your passion, you'll never work a day in your life, right? Um, and you know, it's easier said than done, right? Some people don't find their passion, don't know what their passion is. And so this is, this is not a knock for those people. Um, but if you do know what your passion is, you'll realize that it's a, it's a totally different thing that you're doing when you're going to work every single day. And as Obi knows, one of my quotes is passion over pension. That's my, one of my favorite things because I realized that happiness for me has been about me being able to do what it is that I want to do and not being controlled by anybody else. And that's for me, the most important thing. Um, and you guys touched on this also on the panel. If you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Again, that touches on what it, what, what I was saying earlier, excuse me, um, about w winning with people and then also being willing to delegate. And then the other thing is just appreciate how far you've come, you know, take a step back and breathe. You know, sometimes, you know, as entrepreneurs and as people who are hustling, like you just, you just, we're so ambitious that we just never take a step back and appreciate any of the wins, the small victories, right? We're just looking for the next thing, looking for the next thing, looking for the next thing. And I understand it. That's why we are successful, right? 
but there's got to be a little bit of balance and you got to figure out ways to, to, you know, find that balance. So it's very, very important to appreciate how far it is that you've come, take a step back and, and just breathe sometimes. Um, so um, this is my so, so, social media stuff, connect on social media, Mechadon Music, um, still dope brand. Um, you know, all the streaming services, I have all my music and stuff, if you guys want to check it out. Uh, somebody asked me to, they wanted to hear me rap. So I'm gonna rap real quick. And then before we do a Q and A, is that cool? Yeah, yeah. All right. So it's kind of uh, about my story a little bit. It's like how I grew up and Obi probably appreciates this because we grew up very similar. 13, a young jack in the box, watching the box, eating pops and listening to pops tell it. I'm hearing tribe and day, lie stakes, high J, blige. Hey guys, I love to hear when pop tell it. Pop says to go to class and make grades. Don't bring that card home if it ain't A's. Do what pop says, young boy growing up. And all my homies all around me blowing up. I was a smart dude. Haters had to face it 4.0, then straight to the basement with drum kits to make hits and write rhymes. Ain't no one in the game has stories like mine. When it's my time, I'm going to let it fly. You see, I'm trying to leave a legacy. Coretta's guy. And if they ready, I, I'm going to go get it. Man, I'm down to my last stack. I'm going to bet it. Stop kidding. You're not in it. You're not hitting. You're not ghetto. You're not hood. We're not with it. The delegation says you ain't black enough. You ain't paid your dues, homie. You ain't rap enough. You ain't bust your guns. You ain't clap enough. You ain't a dope boy. You ain't trap enough. Yeah, homeboy, you better back it up. So I studied the game. I started stacking up. It's in my heart. I get it. See, there's a code and the old saying goes that they feel what they don't know. But the only way to go was to turn into a pro, learn the business side of things. They spray me. I will, oh, lost them, but never had a six. Just a gray box Camry from 1986. Awesome. See me on the sticks. Madden, young dude, always had it. That makes me emotional sometimes. Sorry. So just everybody, you guys have been really inspiring to me, like just sitting here the whole day and watching before I spoke. I was like, man, I don't even know what I'm going to say now. <laughs> you guys said everything, you know, but, um, but this has been really good. And, and like I said, shout out to Obi and the whole Space Equity Corps. This has been a really, really, really amazing time. So I appreciate you guys and thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks, guys.